Crossword. Written by Katie Holly. Was commissioned by Cork County Council Library and Arts Service. It is performed by Tig Hickey and Danny Buckley and was recorded by Cormac O'Connor. Let me but do my work from day to day, in field or forest, at the desk or loom, in roaring marketplace or tranquil room. This is my work, my blessing, not my doom. Of all who live, I am the one by whom this work can best be done in the right way. Henry Van Dyke, 1852 to 1933. Oh, yeah. Hello. Sorry, is it all right to plug the laptop in here? Great, thanks. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry. This crossword is getting the better of me. No problem. Yeah, I have it. I'm sorry to bother you. I know you must be busy with your studying, but my pin has run out. Would you have a spare one? I don't think I do, no. No problem. Let you get back to what you're doing. Oh, sorry. Let me just have a check there. I'd be most obliged. Thank you. So it is an old-fashioned thing to have in this day and age. The old laptop has done, a, done away with the need for a pin, I suppose. The computers, they're great jokes. I used to use the one at work before I retired. But that was mainly for playing solitaire <laughs> or for checking the weather forecast on the Google. That's as far as I went in it. What are you studying for? Um, I'm not studying. I'm applying for jobs. I've been looking into doing a course on how to use the computers so that I could email my sister in America. Oh, look. Here you go. Great, thanks. Are you one of the garments? I am. How did you know that? So you're the head of your mother. You know my mam? I do indeed. I often dealt with your mother when she was picking up furniture from the warehouse for the care home. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's where I know you from, the, the furniture place. Mystery solved. Harry is my name. Uh, Brian. What kind of jobs are you applying for? Hmm? What sort of employment are you after? I'd like to put my time in college to good use, but um, there aren't many jobs for people with an arts degree, you know. An arts degree? Sure, that's a great thing to have, fair play to you. Yeah, great thing to have, all right, if you've run out of toilet roll. Huh? People wipe their arses with it. <laughs> what about teaching? Well, I'd have to do a H-dip. I can't really afford it at the moment, and um, I also have a feeling I'd probably make a shocking teacher. What makes you say that? I'm not a big fan of children. Except for my own. You have some? Yeah, just one. Jamie. There he is, look. Ah, no. A handsome little fella. <laughs> like his dad? If he has an ego like he's dead, he'll do all right. If there was a price for being humble, I'd win it. I like it. Tis the stand-up comedy you should be doing. Oh, God, no, nothing like that. Have you any work at all at the moment? Uh, I have some hours in the hotel, all right, bartending. And I'd like to get into management there, but it seems to be sewn up down there with a while. Management? Right. <laughs> I'd say it's a tough market. But you're, you're only starting out. Different from when I was starting out. Back in my day, I remember... Sorry, was... I don't mean to be rude, but I really need to crack on with this, if you don't mind. No problem.
Sorry. Sorry, I'm just a bit on edge. Because it doesn't feel like I'm starting out. Do you know? It feels like I've been in the race for a hundred years and there's no sign of the finish line. Just more hurdles. You shouldn't think of it as a race. How should I think of it? You should think of it as living. What you do isn't who you are. Walk to live, not live to work. That's easy to say when you're retired. Yeah. You sure you're right? Sorry, I didn't mean it to sound it's like... It's quite all right. I just think, you know, you probably faced different challenges back then. Very quiet. Recession. Okay, you did have the 80s. Corruption. Yeah, that's probably the same as now, I suppose. A health service that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. The rich getting richer and the poor staying the same. Parasites bleeding in any state, dry. Parasites like my dad. I know your father had his problems. Your mother seemed to walk the round at the clock. But he never seemed to find his niche. I didn't mean any offence. And I didn't take any. My dad is my dad, like, I mean, we're very different people. He never wanted to work. Perfectly happy doing nothing. <laughs> well, maybe not perfectly happy. I think he might have been quite depressed, actually. But he couldn't see why, you see. No purpose. No reason to get up in the morning. I remember one day asking him what he was going to do for the day, you know. And he goes, nothing. And I said, but you did that yesterday. And he said, I know, yeah, but I wasn't finished. <laughs> so there's no talking to him. Well, you could talk. Doesn't mean he'd listen. I remember him getting a few days work with us one Christmas when we were busy. And he was standing outside the warehouse, shivering. I told him, He'd warm up in no time if he shifted a few pellets with me. I'd rather go home cold than tired, says he. <laughs> well, I never heard the like of it. I hope you don't mind me telling you that. Well, that's not exactly the most heartwarming side of my dad, but you're trying to be honest. And I respect honesty. And I respect someone who tries. Scent. You have to try, like. Work is love made visible. And if you cannot work with love, but only with distaste, it is better that you should leave your work and sit at the gate of the temple and take alms of those who work with joy. For if you bake bread with indifference, you bake a bitter bread that feeds but half man's hunger. Khalil Gibran, 1833 to 1931. Come here, listen to this. Coltus Cultori Aaron in Ennis are blaming a deficit of 127,000 after the county fla last year on the park and ride system. What's that? It's where you drop off the car in the car park and they provide a shuttle bus into events and things. All right. A park and ride. All right. They're blaming the deficit on the park and ride system because as one committee member put it, nobody parked and rode. <laughs> Good Lord. Sorry, Harry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. No, it's fine. Just not used to that kind of language in a library. Stay away from the Roddy Doyle books, though, I suppose. <laughs> yes, I suppose you're probably right. <laughs> Five letters to morally benefit or uplift. Uh, teach. No, doesn't fit. It's five letters. It's not quite accurate. Enlighten. Five letters. I don't know. Edify. Oh, that's a bit of a stretch now for my vocabulary. Huh? You learn something new every day. Do you? Do I what? You learn something new every day. I do. I make sure I do. Well, don't I feel edified. Oh, for Christ's sake. What? The pink snack has gone from three pieces of chocolate down to two. So? We're getting shafted by the chocolate industry. 
pink snack on from three pieces down to two. Do you know the number of roses in the box has shrunk since the 80s as well? Forget the banks, man. It's, it's Cadbury's are screwing us. You're in bed form. I'm in the exact right form for the day that's in it. What day that's in it? I've been part-time employed for exactly three months today. So that's a good thing, isn't it? Some work is better than no work. It's not the work I should be doing, is it? And there's not enough of it? You know, they won't give anyone a full-time contract so you never know what hours you're going to be doing the following week. Sounds frustrating, all right. Yeah. Nine letters. A failure to develop or progress. Brian Gorman. Wrong number of letters. And if I may say, a wrong attitude also. Right answer. Showing the very definition of failure to progress. It's all one word. Stagnation. Very good. No, if I have the wrong attitude, what's the right attitude, so? Huh? What way should I be thinking? There's no should in this situation, Brian. No, I think there is. Like, I'm just trying to be realistic, and you're telling me I have the wrong attitude. But if being realistic is the wrong attitude, then by your reasoning I should be what? Optimistic? Correct. But what if being optimistic is just wishful thinking, Harry? What kind of a job would you like to be doing? <sighs> I don't know. Working on the, on the marketing for the hotel I'm in, not serving coffee to the manager every morning. I'm doing the work of a teenage girl. Work is work. There's dignity in service, Brian. There's dignity and joy to be found in any kind of employment. I do like the chats with the people in the cafe bar, I suppose. And I'm getting pretty good at making the coffees. All those frappe latte chinos. <laughs> exactly. I feel like some class of an artist when I'm making them because I can do the pictures on the top. If you call into the hotel, I'll make one for you. I'm more of a tea man myself. <laughs> Ooh, tougher with tea now, but sure I'll give it a shot. Life's march is relentless, submission wise, as eternity lies in and around the urges to work. There is a saying, those who love work love life, and labour enables the worker to tap its secrets of utmost delight. Faye Slim, Cornwall, 2018. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You don't seem it. There was just some... A person outside. It doesn't matter. What happened, Harry? I wasn't moving fast enough. My fault. What do you mean you weren't moving fast enough? They wanted to get by me and the footpath is narrow and... With those paving stones loose, I... I was taking my time. Didn't want to fall again and... They just got a bit impatient with me. Who was that? Doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> was it Johnny Keller or was it? Well, I, I don't... Yeah, it was. I see her. Still standing there gabbing. Hey! Hey, Johnny! Brian, there's no need. I don't want to fuss. Yeah, yeah. Does you I'm calling on. What's your problem, huh? Telling people to hurry up when you've nothing to do and all day to do it. Don't be annoying people with your shy talk, Joni. Go on. Go on and tell my mother so. Give you something to do for the day, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. There was no need, Brian. There was a need. She gives me hives, that one. I swear she was busy, like. There's no harm taking her down a peg or two. She'll get you in trouble with your mother, no. My mother will understand when I explain that she was hassling you because you weren't moving fast enough. Thank you. Hey, come here. Why did I feel the need to put the word horses on the side of the trailer with the horses inside it? Huh? Like, whenever I see a trailer with horses written on the side of it, I always think, so that's your own business. <laughs> you know, why do you need to tell me you have horses? Huh? That's horsey people for you. It's how people won't blow the horn and upset the horses, I think. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, all right. How's the crossword going today? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad? 
Uh, Harry, there's more tippex on the page than ink. In trying to improve my vocabulary, and they say the best way to do that is to finish the crossword by whatever means necessary. <laughs> Grande. Tis. They were given a terrain all morning, but I see no account of it. Mm. And, I, and they say we're going to have a heat wave at the weekend. Who is they? Like, who is the day in that sentence? Who is saying we're going to have a heat wave? Or, or who is giving it that we were to have rain all morning? It was Biddy Hennessy that walks and spell taught me. Oh, licensed meteorologist, is she? No, but <laughs> Biddy's hip has never been wrong before. Her hip? She gets an awful pain in it when it's going to be bad. This just in, there will be a continuous spell of abnormally wet weather throughout Cork County for the next few days. For more on this, we go to our physiologically clairvoyant weather forecaster, Biddy in Spar. When it's going to drizzle, I get an ache in my oxters. But when it is going to be very bad, I do get a shooting pain from my ankle all the way up to my shoulder blade. So based on this morning's pain level, I'd say batten down the hatches for Hurricane Biddy. <laughs> Biddy is your elder, and you should have a bit more respect for her and people like her, which includes me, by the way. Ah, uh, Harry, I'm only having a mess, but, you know, Biddy is older than Moses, and Batty is a fruitcake, so I don't think I'd be taking my weather forecasting from her, if you don't mind. Well, he was in school with her, so if you think she's older than Moses, you must think the same about me. Oh, no offence, Harry, like, but, you know, I'll check online if I want to know what the weather's going to be like. And sure, of course, they're never wrong online. Well, they might be, but it won't be because they're basing their estimations on the state of Biddy's bowel movements or whatever it is she makes her predictions on. <laughs> That's enough, no. <laughs> Anything in the papers? Mainly words and pictures. Oh, who's being a smart ass now? What are you looking for specifically? Job section. No look yet, then. No, not so far. Well, I mean, I still have a few shifts in the hotel and I'm after handing out a load of CVs. Oh, I had a couple of interviews. But look, there's a lot of people in the same spot I am. You will get started soon. Mark my words. Things are turning around. Do you reckon? People who want work find work. Unless you're my age. Then you get sent home at the legal age and told you're not worth paying anymore. They never said that, did they? No. They're very careful what they say. They introduce a policy that only thinking of me. They offer a very generous retirement package. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I didn't mind to leave. Worked on my whole life. Eight in the morning till six in the evening. Five days a week for 40 years. Tea with the office girls and pints with the boys from the warehouse. A hundred birthday cakes and office parties. And at the end of it, Thanks, Harry. Good luck. Have a nice life. It felt a bit small. Or I did. So I'm sorry, Harry. I thought you'd be only dying to retire. More like retiring to die. <laughs> Time moves on. Skill set is different now from when I started that. You need more computer skills. Continuous professional development. That kind of crack. But did you say you'd be interested in doing all that? The upskilling, the courses? I did. But they had a policy of automatic retirement after 40 years of service. <sighs> Doesn't seem fair. Sure, it suits a lot of people. I suppose if Mike Kathleen was still around, I'd have been delighted to retire when I did. We were going to go to Dublin for lunch. Uh -huh. How do you mean? When we'd get the free travel and when I was retired, we were going to hop on a train to Dublin and for lunch. Head to Galway if we saw there was a show in the afternoon or Cork for a cup of tea, that kind of thing. She used to laugh about getting our money's worth. We've been paying taxes for 40 years, Harry, she'd say. <laughs> Tis nearly time we got something back from the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> she never swore, only when she was talking about the government. Bit of a rebel was my Kathleen. But she's not gone, gone, is she? 
She might as well be, I'm afraid. I call to see her every day, but it's only every other day she realises it. And with Kevin and Anthony going to Australia as well, the house is very quiet. But you come in here every day, don't you? For the chats and to read the paper and things? Yeah. It's a lovely way to pass an hour. But there are 23 other hours in the day, Brian. Here, I'll tell you a good one. I was in Spar yesterday, you know, listening to the crack at the counter. Biddy chatting to her friend on the phone now instead of serving customers, right? Well, I couldn't even get a parking space this morning. Town was that busy with a big bus parked outside the shop because there's a load of Yanks in from Australia. <laughs> now, with the greatest respect to you and other people your age, Harry, Biddy Hennessy is a different class of Egypt. She is dead. <laughs> well, I must be off home now and disappoint herself. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'd probably call in to check the papers, all right, I suppose. Oh, come here. Have you seen your next door neighbour recently? Jimmy? I haven't seen him since the last time I saw him, why? <laughs> no, I just usually see him out walking when I'm on my way home, but I haven't seen him for a few days. So I might call in now and say hello. Fair play to you. You're a good lad, Brian. Ah, sure, look. There's no harm in having a check. Sure, I'm sure he's grand. Didn't he get his glasses sorted and all last week, didn't he? <laughs> Thank God. So he would like a Picasso painting before he got the glasses fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Just true. He frightened Jamie the last time he saw him. I could, um... I could call to you someday if you like. It's getting colder, like, you know... To walk in town mightn't be as nice for you. That'd be grand. When I was young, ah, woeful when. Ah, for the change twixt now and then. This breathing house not built with hands. This body that does me grievous wrong. Not cared this body for wind or weather. When youth and I lived in it together. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, 1772 to 1834. Hello. Yeah, how are you? Very well, and yourself? Ah, sure, dragging away like a small farmer. Come here, just wondering if there's any news in that job we were talking about. What job is that? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but sure, look, if something else comes up. Huh? Can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. Can you hear me? I'm in, I'm in the library. It should be perfectly obvious we're both in the library. What's wrong with you? Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Sure, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, sure, just keep me in mind if anything else comes up. Yes, as you don't look at all well. Oh, I brought the young fella to a minor match yesterday. I had a few after. Uh, it's self-inflicted. It'll be better by morning, so... I don't know. Karen isn't too happy with me. Why? Did she not want you to go? No, no, it's not that. She said it was no problem, but just if I was going to the club after, I was to have two points max and then bring the child home. <laughs> you were there a bit longer than that, obviously. Oh, I thought I had it all covered, right? I told the young fella, if mammy asks how many points did daddy have, you're to say two points. I had it drilled into him. Two points. How many points? Two points. What I hadn't planned for was that after she asked how many points I had, she asked how many seven-ups he had. <laughs> and how many did he say he had? Seven. <laughs> Your Karen is a clever lady. Nearly took the head clean off me after that. It's not even like I was driving. Jesus, I'd never do that. You get mouldy after those feckin' matches and you'll be no good to me now for two days. I worry when she starts talking like her mother, though. What do you mean? Uh, have you met her mother? The woman looks like she was born to be on winning streak. And her voice. It's like fingernails on a blackboard. I always thought she was a nice woman. Ah, she is a nice woman, Harry, but you know, it's your mother-in-law, like. Kathleen's mother was a lady. But she'd eat you without salt if you wronged any one of the family. So you always got on with the mother-in-law? I know. Not always. But I respected her. That's the key, I think. She respected me despite my youth and 
I respected her despite her age. Respect is the thing. So how are you anyway? Better than you by the looks of things. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just something I was reading there, you know, an article that was just saying, you know, people who are, well, people who retire after working all their lives, they just need to keep an eye on themselves. Health-wise, like. Is that so? So I just wondered. Well, you're very kind to inquire, but I've no issues like that. <laughs> it's poor Kathleen has all the problems that way. If I could only take them from her for myself, I'd be a happy man. Sure. I'm as fit as a fiddle. I walk here every day and to the care home and home again, and that's doing the job, I think. <laughs> I'm not really a candidate for the gym, I don't think. You might be surprised. They're doing a Pilates class there on a Thursday evening now. I don't think so. Sure, I never drink coffee after two in the afternoon. What? I couldn't be drinking lattes in the evening. Should I be up half the night? No, not lattes, Harry. Pilates. It's like um, yoga. I'm not a fan of yogurt either. No, Harry, come back to me. Yoga. Yoga. All right. Sorry. I'm a bit out of it today. Need help with the crosswords, or do you? How dare you? I'm perfectly capable. But stick around in case there's some cultural reference I don't know or something. <laughs> For the latest tweet or tweet or whatever. <laughs> you work that you may keep pace with the earth and the soul of the earth. When you work, you are a flute through whose heart the whispering of the hours turns to music. Which of you would be a reed, dumb and silent, when all else sings together in unison? Khalil Gibran, 1833 to 1931. Oh, come here. Did I tell you I was made night porter in the hotel last week? You must be delighted. I am, actually. It's a step in the right direction anyway, sir. And the place will be quiet so I can study for my course. How is the hospitality training York going? Good, I think. It's like you always say, anything worth doing is worth doing well. I'm going to need to make some money from it soon, though, because the young fella needs braces and those orthodontists are serious gangsters. Aren't they? Oh, worse than the doctor at this stage. You wouldn't think teeth would be so important. You would if you had a brain in your head. <laughs> so how are things with you? Fine. Fine. Okay. Oh, come here, I was going to ask you, actually, would you have any contact with the lads in the warehouse anymore? I was thinking of applying for some casual part-time work there if there's any going. You'll be like one of the Eastern European lads with all the jobs you'll have. <laughs> Should they have the right idea, I think. So... Do you have any contact with them anymore? Or? No. So surely no, you catch up with them from time to time. I said no, Brian. Okay. Is something wrong, Harry? Is something... Is something wrong? Nothing at all, Brian. I've been coming to this library for a year now. Every day, day in, day out to read the paper. Then I visit my wife who thinks I'm the caretaker of the office she thinks she works in. I spend an hour chatting to her about her imaginary boss, who she hates. Turns out, he's actually the nurse in the care home. About halfway through, she remembers who I am and asks, Why can't I come home with you, Harry? Did I do something wrong? I can feel my heart in my throat before I can explain that. I'd love to have her home with me and that I miss her all the time and that I'm going slowly crazy from being in the house on my own. She goes back to complaining about her imaginary boss. Is something wrong, Brian? I never see the people I used to spend my days with at work. If I passed them in the street, they laugh and joke their way back to their cars. We spend a matter of seconds chatting before they're gone home to their wives or husbands. And I'm alone, again. Is something wrong, Brian? I hear from one of my sons once a month for a few minutes. He tells me how sunny it is over there and that I should come and visit. I explain I can't leave Kathleen and 
He says he understands and hurries off the phone back to the sunshine and his son, our grandson, who will grow up with an Australian accent. And then I meet you. And you're either in terrible farm or fantastic farm, depending on which way the wind is blowing. You make me feel like I have something to teach you or do for you. And all I feel is useless. Just because I'm older doesn't mean I know anything of value. Clearly other people think that's the case, or I'd still be working. I'm sick of seeing other people enjoying their retirement when I can't. And young people squandering their youth when I did exactly the same thing. I feel like screaming at them. Look at what you're wasting. I didn't treasure every moment I had with Kathleen and no, she's not even in her own body anymore. My Kathleen was strong and outspoken and loving. The person in Kathleen's body now is fearful and confused. Doesn't even know who I am anymore. Is something wrong, Brian? <laughs> you tell me What's wrong with this old fella, apart from being a useless, lonely, retired, waste of an old man? I'm so sorry. What for? You didn't make me old. I'm supposed to be the only mourning Michael in this library. Well... Today it was my turn. Anyway, who wants to listen to grumbling? It's not grumbling, Harry. You've legitimate reasons to be angry. No point being angry. There's nothing to be done. Is there anything I can do? Give me a hand with this crossword if you like. No, but Harry, you've done a lot for me. What are you on about? You... You, I was sleepwalking. I was so focused on all I don't have rather than what I do have. And I'd like to return the favour. Right. Show me that. Let's make a list. A list? A list of what? Um, actions. Tasks. Activities. For what? Reasons for you to stay in the world, Harry. Okay? Now, Karen tells me they're always looking for volunteers in the Vincent de Paul shop. How would you feel about trying that? Sure. I'd give it a go. I haven't used a till before, but I'd certainly help people bring in boxes and that kind of thing. Great. Okay. I'll give them a call and see when they need people. Um, and what about the, the men's shed? I don't know. What do they do there? I think they kind of take on projects, um, plant vegetables, do up furniture, that kind of crack. Should we could call in for a cup of tea anyway and see what it's all about, couldn't we? You're going to come with me? Of course I am. You're stuck with me now, Harry. Well, that'd be great. I'd feel a bit awkward going in on my own. Now, I know the Tidy Towns Committee are always looking for helpers before the competition. Sure, Biddy Hennessy has always given out that the volunteers they get only come out when the weather is fine, the lazy shites. I'm sure they'd be delighted with a hard worker like you. You'll have me scheduled up to Christmas at this rate. <laughs> When did you become so proactive? A wise man told me, you make a living out of what you get, but you make a life out of what you give. Kind of stuck with me. Did I say that? Jesus, I talk to all kinds of shite, don't I? <laughs> but most of the time, it makes all kinds of sense. Anyway, look, you're distracting me. Back to the list. Okay. Um, oh, my mam, she meets a, a group of retired people here for a game of cards every Thursday. Would you be much of a card player, Harry? I play a mean game of snap. Jesus. Poker, Harry. Poker. Christ, they're going to eat you alive. Okay, I'll teach you the basics before next week and you can go along for a look. I could, I suppose. It'd be something different. And I could tell Kathleen all about it then. That's the spirit, Harry. Tell you, you'll be busier now than when you were at work. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I'll run down to Mary there and we'll find out what time that poker game is on at. It's a working man. 
And I've been down underground And I swear to God If I ever see the sun Or for any length of time I can hold it in my mind I never again will go down underground Rita McNeil 1944 to 2013. I see there was another topless brawl in Kilmallock last week. Another topless brawl? Pull the claws off each other, they did. In an argument that started over parking spaces outside the school, one eyewitness stated that the same two were embroiled in a similar fight outside the primary school some time ago. Come to think of it, he says. It was during the hot spell in June last year. Tis the heat that does get to them. <laughs> Good God. Good God is right. I'm nervous enough of Kilmallock people without hearing stories like that. Oh, I meant to say to you, you have the place looking lovely outside. Yeah, it's getting down now. My back is sore from it, but it feels good to be getting something done. And how are you getting on with the rest of them? The men's shed. Great for the most part. For the most part. Some of the tidy towns crowd are lording it over us a bit, all right. <laughs> Biddy Hennessy told us she has to run the flower choices by the committee. She says that lilacs are not in keeping with the aesthetic of the town and that <laughs> gardenias would be more appropriate. <laughs> Fix sake, she's an expert all of a sudden. I don't know where she got that from. The same one wouldn't know a gardenia from a five bar gate. <laughs> So people do these things for different reasons. They do it to give back and to get what they need from it too. And do you think you're getting what you need from it? I brought Kathleen down to see it yesterday and showed her all the flowers we planted and the paving stones we laid. She wasn't quite sure why we were there for a while and I was about to bring her back to the home when she says, you did a great job, Harry. Fair play to you. Well, I felt about ten foot tall. <laughs> Tell me, when are your tests starting? Exams, Harry. I'm not doing the junior sort. All right, smart that's When are your exams? Middle of next week now. Are you ready for them? I think so. It feels good just to be preparing for something big anyway, you know. And my mother is saying multiple decades of the rosary for me on a daily basis. So I'm sorted, I'd say. Can't do any harm in anyway. How's she doing? Oh, she's great. Although, she's after getting into social media in a big way since she hurt her ankle and she can't get out of the house as much. But she's not entirely sure what she's doing. So she has me driven mad trying to explain it to her. Like, I'm pretty sure she was trying to Google something about the Pope's visit to Dublin there the other day. But instead of Googling it, she typed it in as a status on Facebook and then she liked it. And then she sent me a message on WhatsApp asking, Now, can everyone see this on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a gas woman. <laughs> she is dead. <laughs> and you're lucky to have her praying for you. Yeah. How are you getting on with your new schedule? So I'm busier than I ever was when I was working. Fair play to you for giving me the kick up the arse I needed. <laughs> well, now, if anyone was doling out kicks up the arse, I think it was you. And I badly needed it. <laughs> you get no argument from me, you moody git. <laughs> no, in fairness, no. It's great having places I'm needed and wanted. Although I got a bit stressed out last week trying to schedule the yoga in the health centre and meditation in the men's shed. <laughs> it surely must be a good example of irony. Is that... Is that a French book? I'm never learning French now. I am. Well, fair play to you. Why not? I like my crosswords, but learning words in another language is, well, I have to say, I find it fascinating. Go on. Give us a blast if it's all. You speak French. So you can hardly talk English. Hey, I did in school, like. Already ropey enough at this stage now, but I wasn't bad back in the day. All right, so. Here goes. 
Où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Ah, where are the toilets? Very good. Quel joli parapluie. Mm. What a nice umbrella. Excellent. Il pleut encore? Uh, it's raining again. Your French is very good. It's better than my Irish. Like the rest of us, I suppose. As far as I know, the Irish for it's raining again is... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Language, the kids. So they're not listening to old fellas like us. The kids have their heads deep in J.K. Rowling or David Walliams or whatever other authors made it cool to read at the moment. Brian the cynic. I don't think I'm a cynic. You're cynical about the people that write children's books. I'm cynical about multimillionaires that use their names to make money by firing a few words on a page. They're not firing a few words on a page, Brian. They're encouraging children like your Jamie to read. What could be more important than that? He reads David Williams today. He sees a word he doesn't know, so he looks it up. And hopefully that continues for the rest of his life until one day he needs one of those words that he's learnt to say something that he needs to say. And he has it. He can let someone know when he's happy, when he's not, when he's angry, with people he walks with, with someone he loves. There's nothing more important than that. There's nothing more important than David William. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Or oh, did you email your sister in America since you did your course? I was just about to ask you, could I use your laptop? Of course you can. I have a couple of course notes there written out, so I can be looking over those while they're doing it. Oh, Christ, Harry, you'll be here until next Christmas at this rate. Sure, I'm only learning. I know, but sure, look, if there's nothing too personal in the letter, why don't you just call it out to me and I'll type it up for you. And you can practice typing then in the meantime before, you know, you write to her again. Well, that would be great. Thank you, Brian. OK, off we go. Dear Bernie, B-E-R-N-I-E, comma. Comma. New paragraph. I hope all is well in America. Full stop. Right. Now, before you start spelling America for me, can I just say, you might leave the punctuation to me, Harry? I'm actually not completely thick, like. Fair enough. All is very well here. Kathleen is in good spirits many days, and when she's not, I'm there to cheer her up. As I told you on the phone, since I retired, things have been a bit rocky. The days seemed very long. I didn't feel that I was contributing anything. I felt a bit worthless. But in the last few months, I felt a change. I think it all started with a friend of mine. He said some things that opened my eyes and my ears. And made me see, made me think and found activity for me and connected me to the world and showed me the dignity in labour no matter what form it takes and, and I'd, I'd be, be forever, forever grateful, grateful to him. him I'd been reading lots and volunteering and I play cards every week now with a group in the library and I know that the world can sometimes be a difficult place but that's not the first thing I thought of when I woke up this morning I thought about buying the paper. Would I get the crossword done today? And what flowers will I bring Kathleen? I thought about buying my girlfriend a present. Just because. And how good it's going to feel when my exam is over tomorrow. And how I'm going to buy my son a book of poetry for his birthday. Along with a computer game because there'd be blue murder otherwise. But I want him to grow up reading. Because words are important. And finding the right words is extremely important and expressing something through those words is most important of all. Thank, Thank you. you.